Peter Max has been turning out some of this country's most popular art for the past half century. He's a man who loves what he does. As for his fans, their enthusiasm for his artwork is greater than ever. In the world of art, make no mistake about it, Peter Max is a star and has been since he dominated the art scene back in the 60s. We caught up with Peter recently at the unveiling of his portraits of two of politics' strongest players, James Carville and Mary Madeline. On this night, Peter Max was in top form as his fans and admirers packed every nook and cranny of Manhattan's Dyson Gallery to get a glimpse of the master, while at the same time browsing through some of Max's latest works. He knows how to hook into the zeitgeist of, of the time. He knows exactly what's popular. He knows how to work with that. And he doesn't do it in a in a, um, an arrogant fashion, he does it in a very loving fashion. His work also exemplifies how we as a culture always look for something new and exciting to really wet our whistles with. You know, he's an immigrant to this country and I think he is just so patriotic. So he loves this country more than anybody that I've ever met or known in my life. And I think, you know, whoever is, whoever's in office or whoever our party leaders are, he supports completely. And what could be more Americana than painting portraits of the hottest political couple in the country, outside of Bill and Hillary, of course, James Carville and Mary Madeline. What was your first impression when they unveiled this portrait? I, and at first it was like, you know, I've never seen like a myself and that you know and the other thing like a photograph or so so it's really different and I think the immediate thing is is you know hey my kids my grandchildren will have this I mean this is something how, how you know it's it's pretty uh, it's kind of personal are you and Peter long time long term friends uh not long term but we've known each other for a little while okay, so it looks like he remembers you when you had a little more hair on your head yeah, I think it worked for me <laughs> well at one time I did why do you think Peter Max has been so popular for so many years? So many decades, should yeah, I say? I, I, I think like, a, like I'm 54, okay, and I kind of remember him from back then, and is I, you know, I think he took a little hiatus for a while, and he came back and he, you know, people, he had something that stuck in people's mind, and he sort of came back and people said, oh, yeah, I remember that guy. Sure. And I think the real reason he sticks is because he's different. When I was a kid, a blue collar kid on the south side of Chicago working in the steel mills. The first artist I ever was affected by, moved by, was Peter Max when he was doing that kind of stuff. And now I'm a great art lover, much to my husband's chagrin because I buy it. What do you think the key to his longevity has been? Four decades, five decades, still going strong. What do you think the key is to that? Well, he just, he. Well, as he was there, he is today. He's where you are. Peter Max's impact on the 60s art scene has been compared to the Beatles' influence on music of the same era. Today, four decades later, he still has the zest to be creative every day. James Carville was chatting with me before, and he said that he could think of very few people in this country, especially in art or music, that have been as successful as you've been for so long. What do you think the key to your longevity has been? I think is just that I, I don't know, I love my craft, I work hard at it, I take it serious, you know, every day I wake up, I draw right away, I draw before I go to sleep, I, I write down ideas, and it, this is what I like to do in my life. And so if that's what made it happen, it's the only truth I know, it's, it's just like a guy who's a marathoner, and if he wins the marathon every year, he probably runs a lot, he practices. I remember coming out of art school and they said practice, practice. I didn't pay any attention to it, but the second I started drawing a lot I realized that what, that's what they meant. For, the, for those artists that, that look up to you today out there and are struggling, what, what advice do you have for those artists? Um, I think the same thing. Draw a lot, paint a lot, meet people, you know, get your work seen. Today is not like it was in the years of Picasso, Matisse, and Gauguin. I always say if Matisse, Gauguin, or Picasso, if they lived today, they'd want to be on MTV. They'd want to meet uh, Tom Freston and have Tom Freston get them on MTV. That's, what, that's the culture, that's the soul of a painter, of an artist, to do things that are seen by the public. Peter Max seems to leave a lasting impression on everyone who takes the time to appreciate his art as well as his accomplishments in the art world. 
Well, not to toot his own horn, but I think that if he wasn't an artist, he would be a master of marketing or a master businessman because he knows, and I don't mean this in a bad way, he knows how to combine art and business. Not that they shouldn't be combined, but the, the idea of, of, of a starving artist is kind of an anachronism. And if you're a starving artist, uh, you may paint great paintings, but who's going who's gonna to see them? Peter is constantly creating something new. And it amazes me because he's like a little like four-year-old boy. All of a sudden, he's into something new, and look at this, and look at this, and look at this, and look at this. And it just keeps going on and on and on and on. It just, it never ends. So it would be safe to say that life is never boring with Peter Max. Never. A lot of artists that are contemporary artists are very dark. I mean, if you see their work, his is a little more uplifting. It's a little brighter. It, it kind of, you know, it's a little nicer to see that every now and then. What is the one thing do you think separates Peter Max from all the other artists of the 20th century? I think his use of color. I mean, art, I guess, has to reflect the world. I mean, I'm not an art historian or anything like that, but, I mean, they are a, a product of the times, no less or no more, perhaps, than we are. And uh, when he first came out, he was, uh, I mean, it's, look, think about this. How many people get to be successful in the 60s and successful in the 90s? Not many. No. Through his work, Peter Max has certainly left his mark on the 20th century. Fortunately, he has similar plans for the next millennium. For a special edition, I'm Mickey Burns.